Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to review all the videos published in October 2018. Let's begin. So October had several videos covering systems in various AAA games. These are great to recreate to learn the various components that make a system work and how each of them combines into a final effect. The most complex was the Dead Eye effect from Red Dead Redemption 2. It's a really cool effect, and it looks great when converted into a 2D game. The effect in the video is composed of several things, first the post-processing to change the color of the whole scene, then the slow motion effect and the ability to place tags and have tags on enemies follow that enemy. The video goes in depth into how each thing works and will help you analyze effects in games by looking at their individual components. There were several videos from Assassin's Creed Odyssey. First we had the mercenary bar which represents your bounty in the game. If it reaches a certain threshold, a mercenary will come after you. Making the bar requires some interesting logic to get the bar and the icon between each bar working. Then we had the adrenaline system. It is used for various abilities in the game and we use it the same way in the video on the Spartan Kick. So essentially you gain adrenaline per enemy you attack, per kill and per each successful dodge. It's a great video to learn how to organize a simple system and identify unique actions like a successful dodge. With the adrenaline system working, we then recreated the Spartan Kick. It's a very powerful kick that sends enemies flying away. Implementing it requires capturing an action on the player side, but also dealing with the behavior for flying away when kicked on the enemy side. And finally we create the adrenaline bar so we can see the bar filling up whenever we gain adrenaline. This is similar to the mercenary bar, but since we don't have any icons at the end, we can make it more dynamic. The bar dynamically occupies whatever space we define for the background and splits itself up into as many segments as we want. So by using this code in a game, it would be trivial to have an upgrade to increase the number of bars. Then there were three videos continuing our recreation of Spider-Man in Unity 2D. First we made the enemies move, until then they were completely static and only served as a punching bag, so we had the code for them to chase the player. Then we got to work on creating the first Spider-Man specific ability, the web zip. Since the perspective isn't top down, we couldn't add web swinging, so web zipping is a very cool alternative. We point the mouse into a specific location and hit space. Then our Spider-Man fires his webs from his hands into the target. When the web reaches the target, he pulls himself towards it. It's a great feeling ability with some interesting code for dealing with the process of waiting, then pulling him towards the target, and finally a slide at the end. So with that, we then got to work on another Spider-Man ability, shooting web projectiles. This video essentially teaches you how to make a simple projectile. It spawns a web projectile and moves it towards the target position while checking for collisions along the way. We have the nice effect when the web reaches its maximum distance and the whole effect looks great. For beginner content, there was a video on how to make the simplest character movement. It's a very easy to follow video, starting from scratch, capturing keyboard input and moving the transform whilst playing animations. Then we took that base and added collision detection. We did some raycasts before we moved into position in order to look for walls. Again, very simple but very useful if you are a complete beginner. Also this month, Brackies made a great video challenging himself to make a game in just 10 minutes. Then at the end he issued the challenge to whoever wanted to participate. I joined in using a somewhat different approach. Rather than starting completely from scratch, I used the video to highlight the power of writing clean reusable code. So by using many systems and assets that I've created in the past, I managed to create a pretty complex scene in just 10 minutes. The final scene is essentially a bare bones RTS, which is a tough genre to create. We have two factions that we can spawn and they attack each other whilst having a health system and a visual bar and a lot of special effects. Then using that scene as a base, in the next video we expanded upon it by starting to make it more like a proper RTS. So we added gatherers, very much like we did in the gatherer AI series. Then we used those resources to spawn more gatherers and warriors along with a nice RTS UI showcasing the cost and progress of building each unit. I intend to continue doing videos on this until we get to something similar like Age of Empires. There was a quick video summarizing the whole simple AI resource gatherer series. In just 3 minutes I go over all the videos in the series and how each of them builds up to the final scene. I think making a summary when I finish a series is a great way to set things up for the future. In case you're interested in an ongoing series but get lost waiting for the videos, you can check out the summary when it comes out and then watch the whole playlist. And also two videos continuing the create a graph series. This series is very much in depth, so if you're looking to learn how a graph is created, it will help you immensely. First, the tooltip video, which is great for learning even if you aren't interested in making a graph. I'm planning on making a separate video on the tooltip since it's such a useful component and not many people might see it if it's part of a long series. Then in order to prepare our graph to support real-time updating, we had to create the bar chart visual object. It's not a great video that teaches you how to organize your code by using interfaces and separate classes. 
So that was it for the month of October 2018. I hope you found the videos helpful and learned something along the way. If you have questions regarding any of the videos, feel free to post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.